In episode one, Coruscant is mostly depicted at a distance. We're flying over it or we see it out, out of windows. And in episode two, George wanted to get down to street level. Now here we are flying through computer-generated uh, nighttime Coruscant. The sequence has a technical similarity to the pod race last time in that uh, it's a lengthy scene, action chase scene with great many shots where we had to make up the environment. There's you know, no plates to shoot there. Uh, instead of making rocky terrains, sand and, and rock, this time we had to make all these futuristic cities and all the flying traffic. And the, the challenge of trying to make buildings that don't all look the same, that have a distinct architecture was uh, difficult. Throughout the sequence, the architectural style progresses. We begin up near Padme's apartment where the buildings are, are very tall and rounded. And, and as we proceed through the city, we go through different styles. We start in the upper city and then we go down into the older city where we have an older, uh, more linear, squared off architectural style. And then from there we go into an industrial area, big gas generation plants and uh, electrical power stations. And then into the financial district where we have very glassy buildings that are tall and green, and then we go into a warehouse district where we have big storage facilities, and then into the entertainment district where the chase ends. The ambience on Coruscant varies depending on the density of traffic and the location within the city. Uh, there wasn't really a distinction made in the sound between daytime or nighttime. It's the uh, textural distinctions were really made on the basis of the location within the city. There's the entertainment area, there's the financial district, there's the industrial section. Um, those, uh, I made up sounds which reflected the different areas, or I made up elements of sound which could be used uh, to build, you know, in layers, the density for each area. Okay, coming up, way over on the left-hand side of frame, there's a trench. In that trench is an X-Wing being pursued by three TIE fighters right here. Hard to see, but it's there. This was a very difficult scene conceptually because we had to really move around a very large city, which we hadn't done before, which means we had to go through different kinds of districts. You know, the business district, the industrial district, the entertainment district, and they all had to have a sufficiently different look. So, um, but not so f different that you look like you were on sort of different planets or something. The industrial environment we've got here has uh, a bit of a Blade Runner feel to it. On the last picture, we had hidden a couple of Blade Runner spinners in the flying traffic. We talked about it, but never got around to actually doing it on this one. Anakin! How many times I told you? Stay uh, away from power and coupling! <laughs> that was good. It's easier to reveal character under stress and how they approach it and it also makes for an exciting sequence. Sometimes the reflections are on the glass of the window, but also sometimes they're on the vehicle itself. So here you, you feel that you're really going along because you can see the reflections. There's a good, good example of reflections. Personally, I'd very much like to find out who he is and who he's working for. The layout team that's working in here is adding in these streams of traffic, and they can replicate this over and over and over again but they mix it up enough with all the different sized vehicles. I don't even know at this point. It just it seems like hundreds of different vehicles, and some of them are just paint differences, and some of them are size differences, but it gave a really nice feel to the traffic in this section of the chase. 
by adding in all these different streams of vehicles, allowed us to dip in and out of the uh, different levels of the city, made it very dramatic. When I started the sound design for the speeder chase sequence, the original idea I had, I thought perhaps instead of giving the sounds of the speeders oh, a jet-like sound or a combustion sound, that I would make all of the sounds of the speeders out of musical instruments. And then for a music score, I would use just percussion. Although it worked very well in the temp, it wasn't so successful when it was put up against the uh, music that Johnny Williams wrote for this scene. He tended to be a bit more orchestral and less percussive, and I really had to change some of the sounds a bit. Zam's speeder was the most musical of the two, and the sounds for that speeder were made out of an old 1950s era electric guitar and running one's finger up and down the strings of the guitar and recording it through an old amplifier. I'm constantly trying to deal with the fact that Anakin is slightly ahead of himself at all times. You think that he's gone a little bit too far and he's made a mistake, and then you realize that he's actually very clever, uh, and we do that a couple times. And, um, and I like to I like trying to keep a kind of nonchalant um, attitude about this action between the two Jedi, like um, like this is all in a day's work. The third section of this chase is when Anakin leaves the speeder and jumps onto the top of the of Zam speeder, which gives a completely different sort of approach to a chase. It ends up roughly in the same kind of situation uh, that we started with, which in the beginning was Obi-Wan hanging off of an assassin droid, and in the end it's Anakin hanging off a speeder. I like the idea of having a kind of a uh, symmetry to sequences like this and going back and forth between two characters of, of one being right and then the other one being right and, and one sort of seeming foolish and then the other one one-upping him and that sort of thing. The other way. Once again, you've proved you. If you'll excuse me. Digital Anakin falling. I hate it when he does that. Digital Anakin. And then we cut to real Hayden. Uh, so he shot in front of blue screen and then rotoscoped, which means they paint out all around him, and then he's blended in the scene, and then he's right back into digital again. This section, he's actually lying on the real vehicle that was shot in Sydney on a gimbal rig, which means it's a big, it's a big mechanical rig that allows us to pitch and roll the vehicle so that uh, Hayden could slide around on it. And meanwhile, uh, the character Zam is inside the vehicle, turning and reacting to George's direction of whether she's banking to the left or the right or she's diving, and Hayden is doing all of these stunts himself the gimbal rocking back and forth and us shooting him from all these different angles. Here we have Zam doing a transformation just for about a second or so. Computer generated face. George did that on purpose. He wanted to be short enough that some people in the audience weren't sure what they saw. It's sort of the goal for that. And we put little things in here. There's a thematic bit of humor that goes through the whole movie of the Jedi's keep losing their lightsabers. Later on, Obi-Wan will give this little speech to Anakin about how important the lightsaber is. Next time, try not to lose it. Yes, Master. This weapon is your life. I try, Master. I like chase sequences. I have a fondness for racing, and, and I inevitably put something like a chase sequence in every movie uh, in one form or another, or a racing scene or something. It's just I love speed, and I love the the tension and excitement of a chase. This was interesting. I remember they had the cameras basically hanging from a big rope or a cable, didn't they? They were just spinning. Uh, the camera the was on a dolly, and the camera was just panning around as the characters ran in a 360-degree circle around them. We had a partial set, and there were a few blue areas, but most of it was set. And then filled up with extras. And then when you see it, it looks like they're running in a straight line. We shot this sequence in a day. We only built one side of the set, and then we replicated it onto the other side. Everything in the background was done at ILM with miniatures. I particularly like the advertising sign in that shot. Two aliens arguing about different flavors. 